are getting worse. I object to that, Judge. Well, you object to everything, so yeah. knock it off. On the record, this is a sealed case in the D case, case D. And the TPO case, we'll enter minutes in both case numbers. Uh, counsel, make your appearance first. Good morning, Your Honor. Michelle Hauser, bar number 7738, on behalf of the petitioner, applicant, plaintiff. She's present on the telephone. Yes, Your Honor. Let's uh, last order. have both parties stand, raise their right hand. We'll have them sworn in. Sir, raise your right hand. Ma'am, raise your right hand. Do you and each of you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I do. Sir? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, what we're here on for today in this, uh, these two case numbers is Mr. McDonald's motion to dissolve the temporary protective order. Are you still pursuing that motion, sir? Yes, Judge. Okay, and um, there is an opposition filed. Yes, Your Honor. And, uh, okay. So, I'm going to, uh, he is the moving party. I will allow him to argue his case for a few minutes, and then I'll allow you to respond, uh, Ms. Hauser. Okay, Mr. McDonald, you may proceed. All right, Judge, good morning, first of all, and I, I wanted to say that I believe that, that this is uh, prejudicial as, as being in chains and county blues representing myself in front of you for this court. Um, so I just would like to, to, to put that on the record and, as, and that, that it wouldn't affect any of your rulings or anything like that. But I uh, it won't, that. and duly noted for the record. I also would ask that, that there, there's a lot of uh, different issues that, that was on the, the last entry of order that I'd like to d dispute and bring up that, that are complete falsehoods and hearsay that was put on there and is not was unclear and against the orders that were put again on put on, on the record. So I'd like to bring address those issues as well as, as the the issues that, that were brought up by opposing counsel on on the, the petition that have complete complete delusions and and uh, falsehoods and things that, that need to be, be disputed and not record of fact here in this court and any any uh, proceeding hearings that have come up. So can can I address those issues first? Judge? Yes. Well, what we're, we're here. What we're here to address is if you've been compliant with the uh, TPO. I need to look at it in that context. So, Judge, let me and tell you. your request as to why you believe you did not violate this court's temporary protective order. What's, okay. So, Judge, okay. first of all, I would, I'd like to, to, to bring up the, the protective order that was filed on July 3rd that I that I received was for, for sending presents to my own children. Now, uh, throughout the pendency of this case, my ex has, has used the TPO system as a sword and not a shield to protect yourself. I, as you as, throughout this whole case, I've been thrown in jail various times for supposed violations, even violations for trying to call my own children, yet I had contradictory orders. Another thing, recently I was thrown in jail for sending presents to my own children. Um, I was sent in, in front of Judge Hardcastle, who shouldn't have been able to, to see, to be even be the judge of record, because there was actually a, a pending lawsuit, and uh, according to, to Judicial Canon uh, 2.116B, that she's not allowed to be, proceed in, in multiple hearings. Um, as she, she proceeded as a fill-in judge in my family court matter, and then she was in my, my district court case, and I feel like it, I, I, there was a perceived bias and, and partiality where I was thrown in jail for sending these presents. Now, Judge, there was no order saying I couldn't send presents to my own children. I, I, these, these presents were sent for my son's eighth birthday and my, son, my daughter's fifth birthday on Father's Day, coincidentally. And I was thrown in jail on 722 for, for sending these, these, presents, these presents that were addressed to my children. Now, now Judge, when I, got, when I was thrown in jail, I, I had a, a jury trial that was rushed and all kinds of stuff that happened during, during this, which are completely unprecedented. I, the family court should have uh, exclusive and original jurisdiction over this matter, as I'm also being double jeopardy in charge in family court for criminal contempt and now all these felony charges for filing a family court document, a sentence on a letter, Judge, and which I just went to trial on and, and now... Uh, well, I believe you have a hearing coming up, or it might be a, a trial or evidentiary hearing. Is it in December? Your Honor, to or clarify the actually, yes. no, it's not. October 16th, 
At 8.30, you have a status check in, in that case. Your Honor, that's not incorrect. So there's two pending... I thought the trial was set on October 21st. Yes, yeah, so there's two pending criminal matters. He's been found guilty on 10 counts. 10. One count was not guilty. That happened. Yesterday, he filed a motion to set aside the verdict in front of Judge Israel. That was denied. He has got another hearing in front of Judge Israel Monday morning at 9 a.m. on a motion for an OR release, which more likely than not, I probably will be denied. Sentencing for the 10 felony convictions is October 30th. Now, then you have the July wiretap trial, which is the trial you have. Now, Judge, the, these charges are three counts of burglary for fun. I don't have any trials set. No, the trial any... you just mentioned is the October 22nd. It's the wiretap trial. October 21st yeah, at 9.30? Yeah, that's the wiretap. That's when the wiretap trial is supposed to be. the 30th is sentencing on for, the original for case. For the 10. The, there's two separate criminal cases. And there, for the there is pending conviction. writs right now and, and the appeals. That, 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 that my trial, the trial was rushed, Judge. There, there, there was, I wasn't even able to testify. These charges, three counts of burglary for filing a family court document. Her, That's her all uh, Judge Marquis' um, uh, yeah, rulings. That, well, she 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 actually brought these charges about sua sponte, which I still okay. have a pending now, hearing. my understanding is you uh, were remanded uh, back into custody by Judge Hardcastle, Senior Judge Hardcastle, for violating probation. No, there was a motion to, for a, a remand for for a removal of electronic monitoring for sending those presents. My ex went and filed the TPO. violation of probation. No violation. No, there, and your honor, I, there was only a stay away order issued by Judge Israel. That, that's your not honor. true. And if you can look at the transcripts of that day, mm -hmm. just a stay away order, which I explicitly have applied to. I have gone nowhere near my ex. I've gone. I've, I've had no contact whatsoever with her. Okay. I did. I did. However, did I did send presents to my children? There was no order saying I could send presents to my children, Judge. And you so clarified you believe, that on seven three. You believe under the law that there is no prohibition to send presents no, to children. No, Your Honor. There That's, was. There was none. Okay. Well, and, and Your Honor, Mr. Okay. McDonald, this is his pattern. Miss Hauser. Yeah. This is his pattern. Is to just his delusions are getting worse. This is his pattern. There was no, first and foremost, I find it interesting, and I'm glad this is a recorded hearing, so I'll be happy to give it to the DA. The criminal trial that happened in September was not rushed. There had been continuances. No, he was, if there had been, Mr. McDonald, yeah, let me I'd speak. Like to respond no. to that after. No, she, stop. She's done. So one moment, one I'm moment. I'm subject to the stop all. There, Mr. Mueller had requested continuances, and it was not rushed. These charges were on a, pre on a grand jury indictment. They've been out there for, I have the minutes, for a long time. Number one, I believe the grand jury indictment happened in the beginning of the year. It was not rushed. Number two, Mr. McDonald chose knowingly, intentionally, willingly not to testify. I was at that trial. Mr. McDonald knows I'm at every single criminal hearing because he likes to stare at me and stare me down. He chose not to testify. Judge Israel canvassed him. He made a choice. He made a knowing, intentionally choice. And guess what, Your Honor? None of this has anything to do with what you are required to do today, which is make a determination whether, on the satisfaction of this court, the TPO should be extended to June 18, 2021. Mr. McDonald's delusions are a serious concern, and they should be. The burden isn't, hey, whether or not in the time that there's been a temporary order, have you been a good little boy? That's not the burden. And guess what, Your Honor? Even if that was the burden, he still has it. Let's go back. First and foremost, at the July hearing, originally in front of Judge Israel, Judge Israel said, there's a no contact order between you and Mr. And you sent those presents deliberately to let her know I can still get to you. I object to that, Judge. Well, you object to everything, so knock it off. Number one. Number two, it was continued. The remand hearing in front of Judge Hardcastle, Mr. Mueller was at. He raised the issues of whether Judge Hardcastle should be able to preside. There were findings made, and their citations to the law, like most of that jury trial, which was offensive, how they tried to mislead the jury was denied because there was no law on that. He was remanded and Judge Hardcastle made it abundantly to quote Mark Lee, crystal clear. And so did Israel. There was a no contact order. 
No contact means no contact. And to quote Judge Hardcastle, because I was at that remand hearing, where he was resisted arrest, almost turned over defense counsel table. Your Honor, can I get an instruction that every time I speak, Mr. McDonald cannot say objection? Objection is hearsay, Judge. I'd like, objection. To, That's I'd hearsay. like to clarify some of the things that should be Let me rule. Objections are not necessary in a motion type hearing. But um, I didn't get to finish This the... isn't a trial setting. So, okay, Your Honor, so you won't need to say objection, but you, you'll be allowed to respond after she argues. At that hearing, Your Honor, and I've been at every hearing, Mr. McDonald knows. He stares at me the whole time. It's interesting. Judge Hardcastle, Mr. Mueller brought up the issue with whether she could hear. There were findings made. She said no and proceeded forward. If you look at the minutes, why was he remanded? Judge Hardcastle said no contact means also through U.S. Postal Service. Judge Hardcastle found that he is a danger, found that he's on a slippery slope. Judge Hardcastle said he was incarcerated until April of 2019, less than 60 days after he was released pending the jury trial where he was, again, found guilty on 10 counts of felony counts. In the less than you know, 60 day-ish, what did he do? He went to Clark County Bar, meet the judges mixers, he stopped the DA, the prosecuting DA, went and took pictures of her. He went, and these are in the minutes, and Mr. McDonald can object and thinks that it's going to work on me. It's not. He went to the DA's office, took pictures of the prosecuting DA. Then he showed up for a DACLE right before our July 3rd hearing to get the evidence that he did complete the um, domestic violence classes that he didn't compete, complete. He was thrown out of that building for being harassing, for harassing them. You look at these minutes, his behavior is escalating. He is a danger, Your Honor. He's stalking people. And he's continued to do that even now. As you noted in our affidavit of service, when we served the TPO, the extension from September, our process server had to wait an extended period of time for CCDC to bring him up for service. Well, why is that, Your Honor? Because he was in the hole. He was in solitary. Well, why is he in solitary? Let's see. Oh, wait, he got into a confrontation with one of the CEOs about his shaving and his hair. And I think the CEOs here today could probably give that information. He's still stalking. We went over this at the last hearing. His best friend, Steve Sampson, was at a Sam's Club where was at with their daughter following her around with a video. I have the video. His Remember we talked about this at the last hearing. His brother got his own variance to go to the high school where he was teaching at. He makes every effort. She doesn't want to be around. She's changed her normal path so they don't have to collide. He's not in any classes and guess what? He's always there. He is a clear danger. He cannot control himself. The remand hearing, I was there. I was scared. He went for his backpack. That backpack he brings to every hearing, he went for it. He almost toppled over the defense counsel's table. He couldn't control himself even yesterday at the court hearing. If you watch the video, and I can give you the site, because again, I was there. Site at 3021, he tried to talk to Judge Israel. Judge Israel looked at him like, no. Craig Mueller had to go over there and told him to shut up. Multiple times at the trial I was at, he was told to shut up. When the verdict came out, you know what he did? He said, God's will be done. He had to be quickly escorted out after the conviction by Mr. Mueller. Mr. Mueller wasn't even present. Uh, his associate was when the October 30th set sentencing date was because they had to escort him out very quickly. He did not control himself in that trial. He did better than he's ever done in any family court case because Mr. Mueller, to his credit, effectively muzzled him. But he's still a danger. When he's had other TPOs and been incarcerated, Your Honor, he violated them. He has assaulted staff. He's got a criminal conviction, Your Honor, for when he was remanded for, I believe it was the TPO of domestic violence, he assaulted the court officers that tried to arrest him. So. Well, he can object, but there's a court record. He, this is his delusions. Can you, um, what's your understanding? Is there a 
criminal court order that he's not to have any contact with ch the children, the minor children? It's a children no contact order with So what he did... Stay away order. It's a no contact order. Mr. McDonald... Okay. That, I'm asking regarding the it's, children. It's a no contact order. So what he that said, did not include, no contact. That did not include the children. It Well, it so didn't, but it did. So when he sent those presents, Your Honor, he's full of it. I would know in her original TPO application, which the lawyers don't do that for the uh, applicant. The applicant does them in person. It only lists her and not on behalf of the children. Well, and that was because that was her T when he violated the criminal no contact. She's not order. asking for a TPO in front of the children for on behalf of the children. She did, and they said that it's not stated. She hand wrote it, and she only wrote her name. And that's fine, and I understand. There are separate orders and separate laws we have to apply. I understand it. If it's on behalf of themselves or on behalf of the children, this one is only on behalf of, of her. herself. Yeah, and the no contact so, order what, that he violated that led to his subsequent and remand and incarceration was because he didn't send those gifts to the children. That's what his game has been for years. So you years. are arguing that's a form of contact yeah, with her Yeah, he sent them to well. her specifically. The present, <laughs> Your Honor, can you please instruct him? He thinks this is I a game. I will tell you a second time. You don't need to say I objections. I need to clarify after. Okay, thank you. She yes. said that multiple times. Uh, can okay. I take notes? Can I remember all? Because this can is you, a lot of... A can lot you of get him a pen, that. Martin? Can you get him a pen? We don't want to, we don't want to. They're not allowed to, Your Honor. They're not allowed to have a conversation. It would be fine. You get the minutes. Just stay quiet, man. Your Honor, the okay. no contact well, we'll order, just memorize as them. Judge Hardcastle and Judge Israel said, man, no, do not contact The gift that was sent to was on her birthday. And it was um, a Wi-Fi karaoke microphone. The minor yeah, we child... We went through that one. Yeah. So those weren't gifts sent to the children. That's his M.O. He thinks as if he can say, I'm writing to my children, if as long as I put their name on it, then it doesn't count in his magical word, world. But the gifts and the letters he's always written are directly related and intended for Marquis already made that finding. He thinks that if he just writes one of the children's name, it's not a violation. Well, no, it is a violation. Hardcastle has found that. He is a danger. And he, even here today, he, he doesn't get it. He wants to object. You can read, Your Honor. I have the minutes. I'm sure you've read the minutes from the remand hearing. It was a no contact order. Judge Hardcastle found in that remand hearing that he, upon a search warrant, there was threatening information, threatening and for and the district court judge at that time that heard the original divorce post-divorce issue, Judge Marquis. He's been coming to the courthouse with a bulletproof vest. I've seen it. He can shake his head. I've been at the hearings with a bulletproof vest. This is his delusions. And we don't can't simply wait and see what happens with the criminal hearings. We don't simply get to say, well, since he's been incarcerated and he's in the hole for assaulting a CEO, that, hey, we don't need a TPO, and let's hope that if he goes to jail, let's hope that if he's on probation, he stays away. You don't get to wait to see if the children are physically harmed. You enter a TPO. He is abusive. He's got multiple criminal convictions. Now he's got 10 felonies. He's facing another criminal trial. What's this with Judge Ellsworth on October 1st? There was a hearing. Judge court Ellsworth. Noted, uh, yeah, drug court recommendation. I didn't hear. That's not his oh, case. Oh, this isn't him? That, that might be, yeah, that's not his case. This is another Michael McDonald. No, okay. he's got, that does. Judge um, Israel is doing the, that's not him. The, for, the perjury, the forgery, and then the new judge that was appointed okay. by the Governor Silva, I think that's her name, is doing the wiretapping. We went through a lot of specifics at the last court hearing in terms of the packages that were sent. I'm looking at the labels, the address labels. Um, and so I'm looking in the context of NRS Chapter 33 regarding the issuance of temporary protective orders. Um, just can I clarify a lot of the lies and stuff that she, she just... I, yeah, I just, I'm going to allow you to respond briefly because okay, I've got it, another trial I have to start. I'll, I'll be brief, Judge. It, okay. it, everything she said, the majority of it was complete lies, Judge. It, 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 just to say that, that I was... That I, that I sent these presents to, to try to get something. I just want to. I just want to be my, relevant in my own children's lives, Judge. I miss my kids. All these charges, this whole case, every all my cases stem from missing my children, wanting to be in their lives and be a good father to them. 
I know what the hell it's like not to have a father in my life when my mom alienated me from my, my own father. Now, I sent, I sent a Lego set and a uh, science kit to my son. I sent a toy microphone, toy pink microphone, to my daughter for her birthday. I sent them both at the same time. It was June, June 16th. I sent her before then, before that date, and I don't know what the exact date it arrived. But to say that I tried to, 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 to go and, and send it to her to send a message to her is ridiculous, Judge. All these, these complete blatant lies saying that to paint me as some kind of crazy, dangerous person. What have I done, Judge? I, I, the DV, the domestic violence conviction, was when she baited me to go to her parents' house, said to come pick up the children for my, my, my scheduled weekend visitation. It wasn't clear. I said, please come to the co to the, the school parking lot as per the order. She said, no, if you don't come to my parents' house within 15 minutes, uh, you're going you're gonna to lose out on your weekend. And I'm not there. I show up, and she's there. Calls the cops on me. I leave with my daughter. She won't give my son. The cops then call me and say, you violated the protective order. And she said, you pushed her. Never touched her, Judge, whatsoever. Yeah, I get convicted of domestic violence. She goes there and says, I'm afraid for my life. And well, yet yeah, there has been no threats, Judge, no threats against any judge or any, anybody else. And to, to say... Say that that I get uh, I, I get thrown I get 52 domestic violence classes GPS monitoring for six months I've gone nowhere near her judge I've been on an ankle monitor they know exactly where I'm at I'm, I'm all I want to do is be be able to be in my children's lives to be able to, to say that I'm I'm here at the court that I'm stalking people come judge I have no knowledge of, of anybody going and seeing me anywhere around here my brothers goes to the school there was a zone to, for that school I don't that as far as I know. I don't, this is, it's ridiculous to, to paint all these, these lies and misconceptions. Oh, I'm, I'm bringing bulletproof vests. I'm, the, I'm some dangerous felon or something now. I have all these charges. All these charges stem from missing my own children, Judge. I, I, yeah, I've been very emotional. I made some stupid mistakes. I did some stupid things. But to, to say that, oh, I can't even send presents to my kids. I can't see them. I have no rights to my own children. I can't even be in their, their lives or be able to show that, that their father loves them and is doing everything he can to be able to see them. To get thrown and say I, I was thrown in the hole before... Court, I judge, I, I tried to take a shower before lockdown. I got, I got a lockdown for not getting a strip search for a religious service. I never assaulted any officer. There's no record of that. Yet she can just throw whatever lies she wants and see what will stick and see what, what will, will, will go and, and perceive that me in this courtroom as, as being some dangerous person. Judge, I've gone nowhere near her. This is all the delusions of what my ex and, and what she's painting. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm there. Let's, let's keep them from the children as much as possible. It's, it's ridiculous, Judge. I've done nothing to, to harm my ex. I, I'm nowhere near her. I just want to be in my children's lives, and not to be able to even send presents to them. What? 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 A, what? How is that? How is that even? I, I mean, there's so many lies that she said. I don't even know what. I, but I, I'm telling you, every single one of those that she said is, is complete, is, is incredulous. What, what she said, said to, against me. So I'd like to, to just okay. strike any of that from the record of what she said, and, and also address these these blatant lies here, flying drones over her house. I've gone nowhere near her house, Judge. I, I, I've gone nowhere near her. I've done nowhere near the children. I followed all the orders that I could, as as best of, as I could. Now, even in, in, even Judge Israel said, "Look, I don't see any order saying he can't send presents to his children. There is only a stay away order." If you look at the transcripts, Judge, from from uh, when was it? Um, before that hearing, there was four different hearings that saying the Judge Israel said, "Look, there's no order. Show me an order saying that that, that there's there's an order." Then he's like, "Okay, I have surgery." Then Kathy Hardcastle comes in. She already has a, a preconceived bias against me. And the court goes and says, oh, I remember you, Mr. McDonald. You need to be on meds. Here, we're going to go ahead and throw you in jail for, for sending presents to the kids. Yeah, I'm on a $100,000 bill, Judge. I've gone nowhere near her. I'm on ankle monitor. Then, then I, I get my trial rushed. I go, go and, say, and say, hey, I do want to testify in my court. I get threatened by, by my attorney. Hey, if you testify, I'm walking. So then I don't even get to prove intent. I have no intent to damage or defraud the court by filing a document, nor did I have any intent to enter a building with the intent to commit a felony by, by burglarizing the family court, if, trying to steal something. No, I, I filed a document trying to see my kids. All these charges throughout, throughout the last, what, th three years, three years or four years, I've been trying to see, be, see and be in my children's life. I had my children every weekend for a year. There wasn't any issue. She tried to make mountains out of every molehill that she could just to try to, and even, there's text messages and, and statement. If you don't give me primary custody, you're going to be in a fight for your life. And even threatening when I got joint, well, I got every weekend with my kids. Oh, you're not going to see the kids and keeping them from me as much as she could. It's just a, a vindictive way to keep the children from me. But it's, it's causing adverse psychological harm on my children. And I've been devastated, Judge. My whole life has been, I, I've lost almost everything because of this. I just want to get, move on with my life, be able to see my kids, get back to work, and, and be a good person and citizen and help to help others that have been through these similar situations, not ever have to be affected by what I've been, been through, Judge.
So I, I, I ask that, that this TPO, if this TPO does get approved, then what, she'll just use it, whatever she can to try to, and also I even did the Vincent, the email, I don't know if Dr. Clausmo has, has came and, and provided that report yet or not, um, but I asked him to provide that um, last time he visited me, which was, I don't know, I think 15 days ago or so. So I, I've been doing everything I can to see my kids. I even had a job lined up, Judge. I, right, and then I get thrown in jail right before, I, I get, I get, Right before that, that or 7:22, when I got thrown in jail I, I, for sending presents. Okay. So it's well, just ridiculous. I, I asked that this this okay. Okay, this. I'm running into overtime. I've got to make a ruling. Yeah, I just want to clarify. I mean, there wasn't multiple hearings on the no contact in front of uh, their motion the state filed. There's two hearings. Judge uh, Israel yeah. heard the first. Yeah, the criminal proceedings will proceed as planned. Yeah. This is the family court proceedings. I'm looking at it. This under NRS Chapter 33. Um, and that speaks on um, issuing a temporary protective order based on any kind of domestic violence. Domestic violence may not necessarily, in, um, may include um, the issue of stalking. So sending packages, even if it's addressed to children, is still a form of stalking because the mother resides with the children. I would note that in the D case, mother still retains sole legal, sole physical custody. That means they have their the discretion as to contact or by court order. The court had already ruled that um, we are following Judge Marquis' order that he has to jump through all these hoops, psychological evaluation, um, but under NRS 33.013, the standard is to the satisfaction of the court. Extremely low standard. It's a standard that's below preponderance of the evidence, and um, if the court feels that this would fall in any kind of definition of stalking and these other allegations that Ms. Hauser put on the record. Yeah, I do get, I might get a lot of he said, she said, or can she prove you flew drones, but the actual, you have admitted today you sent birthday presents or presents, and the label from Amazon was addressed to the children. Mother resides in that house, so that is a form of contact. You may, you may agree to disagree, but I think under the law, I think it fits in that definition of making contact. Um, now, as far as it, the application, she didn't file it on behalf of the children, but I would relate back. Um, it was a commissioner, a TPO commissioner, that issued, after a 48-hour review, ex parte, they did the um, computerized temporary protective order, and they did say, follow the D case order, which is so legal, so physical with mom can't go to the children's school, no contact with the children, no contact with mom at her workplace. Given all of the allegations, and by defendant's own admission that he sent those presents, he may have had a misunderstanding about the law that it, it would, would not include contact, but I think it's a much more broad-based contact means no contact. Second, even though she didn't apply on behalf of the children, which um, more properly she should have, because of the birthday presents, but it does include um, the D case order. Now, and Judge, that, that, that TPO is um, prior. Let me finish my oh, ruling, sorry. sir. Presents, whether they're birthday presents or for any occasion sent to children, will may have a adverse impact on the children's emotional and psychological well-being because we don't have any psychologist or therapist, counselor, that is monitoring how um, such items being sent to them will impact on them. Um, and it's a very sensitive situation for the children. You have to go through the court process, which means follow the order from Judge Marquis, obtain a psychological evaluation, and then um, reinitiate your request. Okay. Um, the D case order stands. I have, um, I have, a thoroughly reviewed this, and I just don't pick orders from the air. I have to cite to the proper NRS chapter, 33, falls under stalking, um, and it includes the mom and the two children. So I'm going to extend the TPO only from the time that she filed on, uh, applied for on June 18th, and it will be good until uh, June 18th to 2020. 20 uh, 2021. Two years. Um, Question. The case was filed on June 18th. That law did not go into effect until July 1st. 
It's still, but the case was still pending, so it'll go see until 2021. I yeah, double, you asked correct, me that correct. question, so I Okay, so I have to ask, I have to check myself on that. And he was... The new NRS 33 was amended by the Nevada legislature, um, in, and it went into effect on July 1st. TPOs can be extended at court's discretion uh, up to two years. Given that you have numerous um, criminal court proceedings that you have to get through, you've got a lot on your plate, sir. Um, and given that there has been numerous hearings in this case, even prior to before my time with Judge Marquis, and usually, you know, when a lot of stuff happens in a case, things, the dust should settle, but it has not. It has been stirred up, and um, given all of these uh, allegations and the, um, the very um, serious nature of what's going on with you and your ability to get, have contact with the children, you're, you're going about it the wrong way. You have to go through court process um, and um, follow these steps for the safety and well-being of the children. Two years would be appropriate, so it will be 2021, and that TPO would remain in place uh, until then. So it is a final order, res judicata, extended until 6-18, uh, 2021. Okay. Uh, no order is necessary for today. Well, I don't know. You may want to include detailed findings yeah, for I, my I oral say, decision. I statute, I'll do the but I do have the temporary protective order that's being signed right now to extend it for two years. Oh, yeah, and I'll do the detailed findings. And then also, okay. Your Honor, uh, you went really fast on your findings, and I think I heard it, but I could miss construed it. You already found that he, in your July 3rd order hearing, that uh, he did the GoFundMe donation. That would have been a violation of the TPO that was in effect, plus the no contact of the 1488. Remember the neo Nazi. My ruling, yeah, his, his so own admission sure about clear. sending the presents and, and his misunderstanding of the law. Do you I want think me? it's more than to the satisfaction of the court. It's more than a preponderance of the evidence. It's even more than clear and convincing evidence. He admits he sent the presents under the law that qualifies under the stalking okay. definition and. Con and uh, with respect to the criminal order, uh, I think you, um, in candor, stated that I don't you know if there's an actual stay away order from the children, but we do have a D case order, so that's what I'm basing it on. Okay. Um, let me read into the record the additional paragraphs under other matters in terms of the protection order. Number one, no contact with the minor children per the D case sole custody order that mom has sole custody. Number two, no packages, no emails. No mail, no social media messages, no phone calls, no school visits, and then I'm adding here, no presence. Okay, so perhaps I've clarified that order. But Judge, this order, is, was this order issued on 7-3? On um, she applied for it on June 18th. It was Im immediately issued by a commissioner on June 18th, and then it was set on my calendar, and it was... The first one was handwritten by me on the July 3rd hearing. Can the I order's can... already in place in the D case regarding the custody order. Can I ask for clarity on, on NRS 33? It says stocking, it also does something about domestic violence, and, or, or NRS 33 points. See, see, there's something that says domestic violence where, where it, it is the merited system, like where... where uh, uh, since you're asking, yeah. let me add NRS 33. That's 33.018, NRS 33. Point two four zero acts that constitute harassment in workplace based on Ms. Hauser's allegations. Court is persuaded that there has been some type of contact at the workplace. Workplace, so it includes her and the two children. Which I, which was a hearsay allegation, Judge. All these stalking charges when I'm sending presents, I don't believe it's, it's stalking. But it, right? yeah, that's where we agree to disagree. But I have to make a ruling one way or the other, and I'm making a ruling that sending birthday presents when we mean no contact. Temporary protective orders are very serious orders. So, Judge, do I have, so, do I have any parental rights then? Do I get to, what, I, I, I don't know if Dr. I'm not Bob your lawyer, speak. sir. I'm not, I can't give you legal advice. You um, you have the D case order. It should have been sent to you. Do you have a copy of the yeah, D I case sent order? Yeah, um, I sent it to him. We'll be happy to print a copy oh, for him. It was just recently filed. It took a couple of while for Ms. Hauser to get that it was, uh, drafted because uh, it was quite detailed. It is 10 pages. Do you have it? I'll print it. Yeah, I mean, and just to clarify, okay, Mr. McDonald, I, I think once again... He'll be served in open court with the D case order from the July 3rd hearing. That was a uh, final order, which means there are no future court hearings. 
when you take care of all your criminal stuff and depending what happens or if you get out then I uh, it would be useless to file any kind of motions have contact with the children because it would normally be you would be out and then you would try to get your psychological exam done and then put these mechanisms in place to try to reunify you with the children. So, so Judge, after I... I it's going to be know, quite difficult while you're in custody. So no, I, I, I agree. I, 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 so I, I don't expect any motion from you in, in this case until that's all sorted out there. The mentally, and then and then after all this criminal stuff is over, then, then I can... If you're judge. out, then you can file that motion that you had filed previously with me this year and reinitiated. I made clear rulings to clarify, follow Judge Marquis' order, and, and then you got to go through so all wait, that step. So it, is a, it is a process. So Judge Marquis' order, was that the one issued in, in October about the divorce decree, or what, which one? Because there was, there was, there was, as far as I know, there was no TPO. That, that she, mailed, she made detailed yes. findings in that order. You should have a copy of it so you can review that and see what your requirements are, plus the July 3rd order we're going to send serve you with that now, the 10-page order, um, which has detailed findings and direction for you, what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank